Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today in the Crypto Mining 101 series, we're going to be going over hash rate and difficulty. So these are two metrics that we look at within cryptocurrency mining, basically to figure out if it's profitable to mine because it links in in terms of more people on the network means it's less profitable because the hash rate and difficulty is higher, but we'll get into that later on into the video. So let's just firstly explain what hash rate is. It's a measure of hashes per second, but you can think of it as computing power. So normally with CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and ASICs, the computing power gets higher as you go up that scale. And we discussed this in the first Crypto Mining 101 video, where we talked about the progression through from CPU, GPU, ASICs, and FPGAs, so you can check that out to see how a network would progress in terms of those hardware. So normally, if you're looking at hashes or hash rate, you would say that kilohash to hashes, so these two figures right here, would mainly be CPU kind of powerful in terms of hardware. And then for GPUs, it would normally be in the mega hash range because GPUs are slightly more powerful than CPUs. And then FPGAs would be in this giga hash range, but there's also some crossover as depending on the network, you can have GPUs that hit up to giga hash range. And then for ASICs, it's normally in the tera hash range. So normally when you have CPUs, you would be in this killer hash to hash and then GPUs mega hash, FPGAs would be in a giga hash range and then ASICs would be in a tera hash range. Now, as I said, it's all network dependent. So based on the mining algorithm that you're using, I'll just show you a quick example here. As we can see here, we have a 3070 Ti. This is just a figure of hash rate that we've taken from hash rate NO. This is on the Blake 3 algorithm. So the hash rate for one of these cards on the Blake 3 algorithm is 1.39 giga hash. So normally, as we said, this would have been in the mega hash range if it was a GPU. However, Alethium's Blake 3 algorithm is very efficient, so it means that GPUs can be more efficient on the algorithm. Then if we look at the same 3070 Ti on the CarPow algorithm, this is for Neur AI, but it will assign to any CarPow algorithm coins, you can see that the hash rate is only 37.77 mega hash. So within this mega hash range, we had mega hash for the CarPow algorithm. However, the 3070 on the Blake 3 algorithm gave us a giga hash figure. So it is very network dependent on how much hash rate you can get on different cards. So you're going to have to look through into that. But the main rule I'd probably say is CPUs are in this range. GPUs is probably mega hash. And then FPGAs is in the giga hash range. And obviously the ASICs are in the Terra hash range, but you can get into these ranges as you increase GPUs on a rig. So let's say you had, I don't know, four GPUs on a rig, you could get it up to a giga hash range depending on how powerful they were. All of them combined would give you maybe like two giga hash instead of the 500 mega hash for one GPU. So as you go up the range, obviously you have more chance of mining coins and that basically means more profitability slash revenue so the more hash rate that you can have within your rig that means basically the more revenue that you're going to bring in on a network so hash rate is just a figure that is assigned and it's basically computing power on a certain network for an example of hash rates on fpgas as you can see here this is in mega hash so this is 2790 mega hash for this TH53 FPGA on the Casper network. Now this would equate, I believe, into 2.7 giga hash. So we're in this giga hash range again for this FPGA. However, if we look at our Ice River KS3, this has a hash rate of eight terahash on the network, on the Casper network. So we'd be in this range for the ASICs. So I'm just trying to give you examples of how hash rate would increase as you go up the hardware scale i would say but all you need to really know is this is how much computing power or hashes per second you are doing on the network the more hashes per second the more likely you are to find shares on the network and then that obviously equates to finding more blocks or if you're in a pool that means more revenue for you so now let's get into hash rate and how that links into the difficulty side and here is a Bitcoin hash rate chart. So there's a lot of hash rate charts and you can find them for all types of coins out there. And what we have here is, as you can see, this is from 2017. 
This is the hash rate of 2017. It was around six equihash. So we're looking at this range now in equihash. And if we go to here, we can see that the hash rate as of today was 498 equihash. So that's maybe a 10x increase in hash rate from 2017. Now, as hash rate increases on a network, so we're seeing this increase on the Bitcoin network, what tends to happen is that the difficulty goes up as well, which means it's more difficult to mine on a network. This is because there's more miners on the network, and that would mean that there's less profitability. Let's say, for example, you have 10 miners on a network. This would mean that there's only 10 miners that can find blocks. However, if you up that to 20 miners on a network, that means the profits from the network have to be shared between 20 miners. So you can see how as hash rate increases and as more machines come onto the network, you get less rewards. The rewards aren't strictly based on the hash rate necessarily. They are mainly based on the difficulty on the network. So right here, we have a difficulty chart and difficulty is just measured in this T figure. It's not necessarily assigned to anything. It's just the calculation that goes on on the network. I'm not going to explain necessarily what that means because this is just a quick overview. But as you can see, this chart looks very similar to the chart that we saw previously, and that was the network hash rate chart. However, difficulty chart, as you can see, is kind of like a stepped chart. So difficulty changes only after a certain amount of blocks. And as you can see, as we're going into 2021, the difficulty spikes and then it drops off. Now, this is because the price of the coin actually went down within this period, which means it would be less profitable to mine. So miners came off the network in this range. You can see dips here where miners come off the network as well because it's not profitable to mine the coin anymore. So normally you'll have two types of miners, ones that mine 24 seven, and these are gonna bring up the main core of the network. They're gonna be the underlying miners who keep adding hash rate month over month or year over year and they're normally going to be running at 24 7 and then you have kind of partial miners which will get on and off the network depending on profitability so what you would do with these is normally when you see that difficulty drop like we saw there this would be the base figure for you know profitable miners that could keep it running 24 7 and this was the amount of people that were kind of dropping off if we go back to the hash rate chart that we just saw there and we come up to this figure, if we go all time and scroll this back into the same time range, you can see that the hash rate drops off. So more miners getting off the network. This would kind of be the base profitability for these 24 seven miners. And the rest I would assume as those miners who are becoming unprofitable. So obviously dependent on the electricity price. And if you wanna look at electricity prices and stuff like that, the previous Crypto Mining 101 video explained that in depth for you and how it relates to profitability. So as miners come off the network, the difficulty drops, so does the hash rate, and that means it's easier to mine. So these ones that are mining 24 seven basically pick up more Bitcoin and it's called yield mining. And this happens on every network. And basically what it means is you're gonna yield more coins for the same amount of hash rate because if more people are coming off there's more chance to hit blocks and get shares and that means that you're going to be you know hitting more shares and you're going to be yielding more coins while difficulty is lower than it previously was so that's how hash rate links to difficulty now both of these aren't necessarily linked as you saw with the chart here we have the hash rate chart and this is moving substantially quicker than what we see in the difficulty chart. So the hash rate was moving up and down a lot. However, the difficulty, as you can see here, is constant for longer periods of time. So the difficulty doesn't necessarily react as quick to the network. Normally with coins like Bitcoin or coins with long block times, the reaction on the network, as in the difficulty reaction, is a calculation that takes a certain amount of days so therefore it's calculated over a couple of days. There are networks such as Casper coin where hash rate basically determines difficulty very quickly because the networks react very quickly with the difficulty. So that's what difficulty is on the network. Now, mostly it is a calculation, as I said, with longer block times, like 10 minutes for Bitcoin, the calculation takes longer. So that's why you're not seeing the network react instantly in terms of the hash rate over the 
Bitcoin difficulty. And we can actually find an overlay of these two charts right here. So right here on blockchain.com, we can see an overlay of the two charts. So the blue is the hash rate and that's going up and down, you know, pretty regularly. And then the difficulty is in black. So you're seeing constant difficulty and then it jumps up and it stays constant and then it jumps up again. However, hash rate normally is forming difficulty. Just difficulty takes a calculation. So it doesn't necessarily respond as quickly as hash rate does because people can join the network instantly. However, the difficulty is a calculation on the network. So that's why you don't see these quicker periods of difficulty adjustment. So I think I've covered everything in terms of hash rate and the difficulty on a network. What you need to know is hash rate is how much power or computing power a hardware has. And as you add more hash rate onto a network, the difficulty should increase. And if you take hash rate off the network, say for price reasons, as in you're not profitable anymore, people might get off the network, then the difficulty is also going to drop. And if you mine within those lower difficulty ranges, you're going to yield more coins. That's the main basic overview of hash rate and difficulty. Hopefully you guys learned something from this and you started to crypto mine and learn about hash rate and difficulty. If you have any questions or you have any suggestions for the next video in the Crypto Mining 101 series, please leave them in the comments below or you can join the Discord and put them in there. Like the video and subscribe for more content like this.